name of Jesus we are praying. Now, take note of this. This is a special service. It shall be special to you. Someone here will have what I call surprise open doors. Who is that one that will have it? Surprise open doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. That daughter of God was expecting just anything, including don't come to this work again. But what she got was a surprise package. It will happen to somebody else here. In the name of Jesus. Now we are going to pray before you sit down. Some doors are shut. Not just because they are naturally shut. But because there are satanic agents behind the door. Shutting the door. I'd like you to concentrate here. Be here. Be fully here. Let me tell your neighbor, be fully here today. You're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, execute vengeance against all forces behind any door shut against me. Now let's take it again. Father, in the name of Jesus, execute vengeance against all forces behind any door shut against me. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, execute vengeance against all forces behind any door shut against me. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking, O Lord, that you execute vengeance. Execute vengeance against every force of hell. Behind any door, shut against me. In the name of Jesus. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. As I give vengeance. Vengeance against any force. Behind any door, shut against me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we are free. It is done. Every door shut against you shall be forced open today. And any satanic agent behind the shut door shall receive the judgment of God. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus and you may be comfortably seated. It is my year of breaking limits. Let's start this way. We understand from scriptures that God has given us all that pertain to life and godliness. He has. Not that he's going to. He has given us. We also understand from scriptures that we are called to glory and to virtue, not shame and reproach. That's why I have good news for you. You will not see shame again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all things, somebody say all things, that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Miracle job pertains to life and godliness. Do you, do you agree with me? God has given and it will manifest this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing pertains to life and godliness. Do you agree? Your healing will manifest today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God has given us but 
we assess all those things that God has given unto us through knowledge. Somebody say through knowledge. The more we know, the better we live. That's why the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. Who is that talking to? You will do exploits in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are digging more in this service this morning. And as you know more, you will do better in the mighty name of Jesus. Does somebody still remember the theme for this month? Say it again. Say it with no apology. Say it and make the devil mad. Say big amen. You are going to be praying. You are going to be declaring. Hear me. Let me say, so, let me warn somebody here. Don't look at what you are going through. Because what you are going through is going to turn to you for a testimony. Don't just sit down there and they say something and they, no, no. Tell, let me tap your neighbor. No. no. You must respond. You must. Because your story is changing for the better. Yeah. If you are the one I'm talking to, that amen should be louder. Yeah. Our topic is unveiling our breaking limit heritage in the world. This is part 3A. And we have a rider looking at our limit breaking heritage in the world. We understand from the scriptures that the word of God is the mirror, spiritual mirror of God that reveal our heritage to us. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. Remember, you are only giving what your eyes can see in the kingdom. It's one of the laws of the kingdom, fundamental laws of the kingdom. As far as your eyes can see, he said, I have given to you. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 14 to 15. He said, look not what, look sight what, look Eastward, look westward. As far as your eyes can see, he said, I've given to you. Somebody will see well today. Until you can see it, you have not been given. And when you see it clearly, the Lord will hasten his word to perform it in your life. Somebody will see well today. Look at the conversation between child Jeremiah. We always talk about prophet Jeremiah. But the Jeremiah, child, as at that moment, he was a child because he said by himself, I'm a child. God, go and look for another person. God said, he's the child I'm looking for. But look at the conversation in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, that's Jeremiah speaking, saying, Jeremiah, what's yes thou? And Jeremiah responded. He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said unto me, Thou art well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. You see, you will see well today, and the Lord will hasten his word to perform it in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to be looking at two of those virtues that will break and destroy limits in your life. Right in this service. And this one will answer for somebody. Is that somebody in church today? Yeah. Let that, that amen be louder. Yeah. Number one virtue from the word of God that we are looking through the word of God is you are redeemed a star, not a failure. Come on, say I'm redeemed a star, not a failure. In Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16, Revelation chapter 22 verse 16, Jesus, talking about Jesus, I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify unto you. These things... In the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and the morning star. The bright and the morning star. And he said in John chapter 17, verse 18, he said, As my father has sent me, so sent I you. So he came in here to the world as the bright and the morning star. So if he sent us the same way his father sent him. Who should we be? And what should we be? Bright and the morning star. Now, let's do a little bit of digging more 
Stardom is synonymous with success. Do you agree with me? That's why you are traveling somewhere, maybe in the airport, you saw one of the uh, movie stars. Hey, you carry paper. To sign autograph for you. You saw one of the uh, 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 football stars. You ran after him. You know why? He's successful. In a way, that's why you are running after him. Many people have passed, passed through the same place. They didn't even see them. They didn't look at them. You two have passed through the place. Nobody has carried anything to come out. But from this moment, your story is changing. I say from this moment, your story is changing. So stardom in our contest, contest is synonymous with satisfactory progress. Who is making that? Somebody is making satisfactory progress. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are redeemed to shine bright more and more unto the perfect day. Proverbs chapter 4, 4 and verse 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Who is God talking to there? Come on, say, that's me. That's me. So, failure is synonymous, synonymous with dullness, gloominess. Nobody wants it. You will not fail again. Amen. The last failure you saw will be the last you ever see. Let me say this again, just like my father said. He said, you may be challenged, but you cannot be defeated. I said to you, even the challenges you are going through right now, we turn into outstanding testimony for you. Did you hear that testify? He said, he wrote that exam, that medical exam. She didn't think that she would pass. She was just even looking for ordinary pass. But she came with outstanding success. Your, your testimony will be outstanding. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. say with me again, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. A, star. a star, not a failure. Not a failure. Can you say with holy anger, I am redeemed? I am redeemed. A, star. a star, not a failure. Say it and let the devil be mad. A star, not a failure. Say a big amen to it. Number two, you are redeemed to be far above all principalities and powers. Everyone that is a child of God, you are far above all principalities, far above all powers. How do I know? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. He said, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, he said, that place is far above all principalities, all powers, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. If that's you, come and say, that's me. Therefore, I said to you, never be afraid of the forces of darkness again. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Never, never. The devil knows what you carry. It's you that don't know. The devil knows that he cannot try you unless you submit yourself to him. Never be afraid of witches, wizards, or courting people again. Speak to their face. Are you hearing me? They know what you carry. It's you that don't know what you carry. If you allow fear to grip you, then you have submitted yourself to them. One of our, one of our precious sons came to me and said, one, one, one courting person was commenting. Ah. I said, ah. My body was shivering. Let, 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 let me just get the phone number of the, the devil and speak death to him. I'm a server of life unto life, for those that want life. I'm a server of death unto death. That's for another day. If that's the other one that you want, I'll give it. And I tell you, unless God is, not, unless God is not, no longer in heaven, then you know he's still in heaven. 
So from this moment, never be afraid of any force from the pit of hell. Yeah. Why are they hiding? It's because they are afraid too. Yes. Are you there? Yes. Have you ever seen somebody, a witch, comes to the open and say, I am a witch. I just killed four children just now. He won't leave that place. They will lynch the devil out of him. Oh, <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. So you are far above them. Far above what? <laughs> All those dreams that you had, you had one small dream, you're already thinking it's because of that, that man. He said something, he said something to my parents the other time. Uh, he's the one. He's uh, my other, my uncle. For what? Come, come and say, I am seated far above principalities and powers and dominions. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 14, in righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression. It shall not, and thou shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. You know, the, many, many, many believers will just take the word of God as just, uh, just the things that we read in the paper or the things that many people say, it doesn't really have anything, it's just a natural word. No, it's not. I shared this with you. I was in a particular uh, flight and the flight was wonderful. Was going to drop, it was as if it would drop in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, oh, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, uh, or adults, adults were vomiting like babies. In fact, the one by me was vomiting like. Later, I said, "I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. For, I embarrassed myself. Yeah, I messed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a medical doc my, doctor myself." And I told me uh, something. Uh, something rises. <laughs> Meanwhile, shortly before then, shortly before then, they were serving. Oh yeah, uh, uh, champagne. I, I see people collecting champagne. I look at them. They have not finished drinking the champagne before that is started. The people that collected champagne started firing prayer. Holy Ghost. I say, see Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Oh, Jehovah. Oh, Jehovah. I say, ah, you just took champagne now. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> Somebody's story is changing. Amen. If you are that one, let your amen show you. The word of God is powerful. Is what? Powerful. powerful. The Bible says it's even sharp, sharper than two. But don't take it like just the word that was given to you by anybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say after me, I am redeemed. To be far above principalities and powers. I shall not fear evil or terror because it shall not come near me. Somebody shout hallelujah. However, access to God's word or to the plan of God from his word. Demands that one must possess a meek spirit. What do I call it? A meek spirit. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4, he said, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God of great price. Meek spirit. A meek spirit is a teachable spirit. What do I call it? Teachable spirit. Psalm 25 verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. If you are not teachable, you need to watch it. Meekness is not there. A mixed spirit is a correctable and mendable spirit. How do you react when you are corrected? That's how meek you are. That's the level of your meekness. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8, it says, Reprove not a scorner, 
lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. You, how do you respond to correction? Angers you and you're already vibrating. You want to even fight everybody, destroy everything. Check it. You must be meek. Let me tap your neighbor. You must be meek. A meek spirit is a submissive spirit. James chapter 4, verse 7. He says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, most believers will read that scripture to say, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. No, 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 it didn't start there. That scripture starts with, Submit yourself first. Until you submit yourself first to God, resisting the devil may be effort in futility. Please note that grace does not, does not go with pride. Grace does not travel with pride at all. James 4, 6, 1 Peter 5, 5. God gives more grace to the humble. And grace is the platform for greatness in the kingdom. You know, Moses was the meekest before Jesus Christ. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. The man Moses was the meekest. The meekest. And Moses has had access to the ways of God. In Psalm 103, verse 7, Psalm 103, verse 7, the Bible says, God made his ways known unto Moses. But the Children of Israel only had access to his hearts. Let me explain that a little bit to help us. Many of us, we drive, isn't it? That means you do not just enjoy the acts that motor vehicle can deliver. You know the ways of motor vehicle. Do you agree with me? Because you can move it. Okay, let's take it a little higher. How many of us have flown before? Flown to somewhere? I'm not talking about in the night. <laughs> That's why right, people are not lifting up. Here. I'm talking about you book your flight <laughs> and you enter the, you check in and you enter the aircraft. <laughs> Wave your hand if you have. Uh, you have, I know. <laughs> Now, you only know the act or enjoy the act of flying the way you don't know. In fact, if you look at the cockpit and you see the buttons, it is well. <laughs> Moses was shown the ways of God. Those that have the ways of God will command the acts of God cheaply. That's why Moses will just stand there and say, okay, let there be darkness. There will be darkness. Are you there? The children of Israel, yeah, they were enjoying the miracles. But Moses was the meekest before Jesus Christ. So that's why he had access to his ways, to God's ways. He had grace. Even was the greatest in Egypt. Exodus chapter 11 verse 3. I see somebody's story is changing. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. You know, meekness is a choice. Is what? It's a choice. Come on, say, I choose to be meek. I choose to be teachable. I choose to be correctable. Say a big amen to that. Today is our covenant day of open doors. Open what? Doors. Not just one door. Open doors. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. I'd like us to read it together. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Let's go now. One, two, go. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, you could have been using Texas. <laughs> These things said, He that is holy. He that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened it and no man shut it. 
and shut it, and no man open it. Verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied me. The Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. It is also our monthly special anointing service. Open doors in our contest connotes new possibilities. Somebody say new possibilities. And that's what somebody's going to have today. In the mighty name of Jesus. When doors are open, for instance, natural door, you have the possibility of going in or coming out. Today, what you don't want will come out. Amen. I thought you had me. Amen. What you want will come in. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you want to see or you want to imagine the importance of open door as, relates, as it relates to something that you don't want to go out, imagine you living in uh, that place you live that's very close to the bush <laughs> and you forgot to lock your door you went out and you came in as you came in you opened the door the door was open and you came in because the door was not properly locked a cobra had entered. <laughs> Do you just go ahead, just say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, then you go to bed. <laughs> that door must be open. That stranger must go. Otherwise, nobody will sleep in that house. Do you agree with me? Every stranger hanging around you must go today. So that you understand what we are talking about. In case you don't know or you think it is not like that, diabetes is as dangerous as that cobra inside the house that must not be slept with. Do you agree with me? They must go today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For instance, Expect the following doors to be opened today by the key of the word and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Number one door that we're looking at, number one, is door of healing and deliverance. In Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible said he sent his word. His word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Thank God for that testimony we had. If they say it post whatever the depression post, it will last for three years. Three years to be in depression is enough time to die and be forgotten. Is that not true? Yes. But today we have a testimony. I say to you, I say to you, by the word of the Lord, every stranger hanging around you must live today. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because Every plant that has not been planted by my heavenly father must be rooted up in the mighty name of Jesus. You will receive your total wellness, total wholeness, total healing today in the mighty name of Jesus. The chain of oppression must drop you off you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, it shall come to pass in that day. That his body shall be lifted from off your shoulder, his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? The anointing. The yoke of sickness and disease shall be destroyed today. The yoke of oppression, depression, affliction from the pit of hell shall be destroyed today. And you shall be totally free. In the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The brokenhearted, hear me today. You are healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the chain of that oppression of brokenness in your spirit is removed. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And every unwanted visitor is chased out because the door is open. And as a result of this open door, your healing is restored. In the name of Jesus Christ, and you are free. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 22, 2 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 7, the Bible says, God has spe specially anointed someone to cut off the house of Ahab. That's what I've got today. Everything that is trying to cut you off, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon my life, I decree that such is cut off right now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit at work in the life of my father and this commission, I decree that that evil is cut off. And you are free in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, let your amen show it. How many of us believe that that door is open right now? How many of you all believe that the enemy is chased out right now? Wave your hand. How many of you all believe that your head is restored right now? Amen. Your healing is restored Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two, number two, door that must open. And, and I, I think somebody, somebody's own is this, including myself, the door of destiny. Amen. Somebody's destiny will open up. Amen. Oh, are you that one? Let your amen show it. Yeah. David was a forgotten person. Even by his family. He was forgotten. They were asking for the children of the man, the father. The father presented all the children, excluding David. They didn't even remember him at all. At all. Until the prophet asked, do you still have any other child? He said, yeah, oh, there's one, the youngest is in the bush. Because it's not relevant for this kind of thing that we're talking about. He said, no, that one that is in the bush must come. We will not sit down until he has come. And David came. And David was anointed. For Samuel 16, 13. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. Put it this way, his destiny opened up. Somebody's destiny will open up. Amen. By the anointing that is coming upon you today, your destiny will open up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know the first thing that happened? Immediately he was anointed. Without application. Without any credential. He just found his way in the palace and became an armor bearer. He never went to any military school. He was just in the bush. Why his destiny opened up? You know, the moment his destiny opened up, God created a space for him in the palace. He was anointed in verse 13 of that same scripture. Verse 14, the evil spirit was already troubling So. And what can we do? He said, go and look for somebody that can play. Ah, ah. Who can we look for? Who can we look Oh, I know somebody. I know somebody. You know, God created an opening. Who needs a job here now? Lift up your right hand. In the name of Jesus, your opening, the desired opening that you, you really want is created right now. Wherever you want it is created right now. In the mighty name of Jesus created the opening. God created the opening for David. And said, okay, we know to somebody. And they brought him to the palace. Verse 18 or to, to verse 23. And the Bible says, Saul loved him. He was forced to love him. You know why? Because God did it. God will do your own. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's the same case with the apostles. Okay. Continue with, with, with the same David. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 51 to 52, the man that never went to military school killed Goliath. And 1 Samuel 18, 7, <laughs> he became a celebrity. 
The women were singing. David killed 10,000. Saul killed 1,000. Saul, a whole Saul, the king. The chief, the commander in chief himself, 1,000. You know why God opened his destiny? Hey, by this anointing, your destiny must open. In Acts chapter 4, verse 13, they took notice of the apostles. They were unlearned. They were ignorant people. But they could not deny what God was doing to them. You know why? God opened their destiny. Because the Holy Ghost came upon them in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. Today, as you are anointed, your destiny must open up. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three. Door of breakthrough. Who need that? Door of breakthrough. That will happen to somebody. Amen. The anointing opened naturally impossible doors. As in the case of Cyrus and the apostles. Cyrus was another nobody that should not be known in when we talk about the God of Israel. But God, talking about him, he said, <laughs> my anointed Cyrus, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1, all to verse 3, thus said to the Lord, to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand have I holding to subdue nations before him? I will lose the loins of kings and open before him the two leaf gates. And the gates shall not be shut. Every door that God is opening before you today, it shall not be shut. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The apostles, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 6, they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. You know, they were hiding in the upper room when Jesus ascended. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, they were with one accord. They were inside the, inside the upper room, hiding there. They were praying there. <laughs> and Acts chapter 2, they continued. They were hiding. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost came upon them. And the story changed. Peter, that could not stand before a little girl, stood and preached a message that he didn't prepare. He didn't prepare for the message. He stood and preached a message and 3,000 souls were added to the church that same day. Acts chapter 2 verse 41. They baptized everyone. <laughs> he said they were baptized. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. <laughs> 3,000 people. To a church of 120 people. All the people that were baptizing in water, they were very busy that day. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. It's going to happen here. Yeah. Are, you ready? are you ready? I said it's going to happen here. Yeah. You know, the pastors are not saying amen very well. Yeah. I said it's going to happen here. Yeah. Many people will sleep inside water to baptize people. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know why? Their destiny opened up. The people that were hiding became the people that were manifesting the glory and the power of God to their world. That shall be your testimony. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 5 verse 12, they did signs, wonders, and mighty works. And in Acts chapter 5 verse 28, they said concerning them that these people have filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. Acts chapter 14 verse 27, God moved them higher again, opened the doors of Gentiles to them. People of God, that door of breakthrough, as it relates to you, is happening today. Amen. The door is open today. Amen. Your career, your business, Amen. everything around you, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you believe me, let your amen show it. Amen. So every closed door and every door shut against anyone shall be open today. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Who received that? It is done. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Very quickly, because we are still going to pray. 
<laughs> in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus said, I stand be by the door of your heart and I knock. Open door so that I can come in. Open doors that we experience through God is a function of we opening our, the door of our heart to him first. Are you there? That is what I call yield. You know when you are driving, you see a particular sign on the, on the, whether on the display or on the floor, you are told to yield, you stop. If you want to respect yourself very well, you stop, isn't it? Uh -huh. If you try to go, there may be something else. So we must yield for him first. Open the door of our heart for him first and let him come in. Then I tell you, <laughs> just like I mentioned to us before, no, no demon, no occultic person can stand you. Amen. None. Amen. That occultic person is not born by any devil. So wherever you are, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We are going to be praying in a moment. We are going to be uh, ministering the anointing in a moment. Before we do that, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'd like you to stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet. You want to receive him. You want to make him your Lord. You want to make him your personal Savior. That is how to yield unto him. He said, I stand by the door of your heart and I knock. You have a choice to open, and I know you will open unto him right now. So wherever you are, you are standing up to your feet, come right into the front because I want to pray with you here. I want to pray with you here. Or you want to rededicate your life to him. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus before, but you walked away from him. He's saying unto you, open unto me. You have locked the door by yourself. Open, let me come in and do you good. So wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to him, stand up to your feet and come right into the front and Jesus will receive you. Then you consciously receive him into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. He said, anyone that denies me before the people, I will deny that individual. God will not deny you. So wherever you are, come right into the front. Choir, can you sing a chorus for us? Lord, come right into the room. I'm waiting for you right here. Heart, come, 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 come. Stand up right now. Satan cannot hold you. You have the choice to make. Make the choice for Jesus Christ today. And you have the privilege of enjoying abundant life on the earth here and reigning with him in eternity. I should still mention this to every one of us, to our hearing. At the name of Jesus, Every knee must bow. Every tongue will confess. But where the knee will bow and where the tongue will confess may differ. 
We can choose to confess right now. We can choose to bow right now when we have the opportunity. A time is coming. There won't be any opportunity to choose again. It will just be that you have chosen not to. This is not religion. This is life. The people here are not the worst sinner. No, they are just being very sincere with themselves. Somebody knows that you should be here and say, oh, that's what they say. Don't let the door be shut on you. That door can only be opened by God. If you shut the door of your heart on him, every other door is shut. Are you there? So wherever you are, you need to be in the front here. You better come right now before I finish praying. And receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Open the door of your heart to him. People in front, I'd like you to just lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. And say after me, say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you came to this world. You died for me. On the third day, you rose again. Jesus, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Give me the power to live above sin. Now I know I'm born again in Jesus' mighty name. Keep that hand there as I pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless your holy name for these precious souls that your grace has located this morning. Let that same grace keep and preserve them to the very end. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, wash them in your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give them the power to live above sin. Satan, I command you right now. Take your hands off everything that has to do with them. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everything that we have talked about today concerning redemption begin to work in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be the holy name, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Amen. Congratulations in the name of Jesus. <laughs>